There was no way in hell today's featured band was going to record today's featured song, uh, a future number one hit from an iconic 80s film. They just, they wanted nothing to do with it. They didn't care if it was a lock. It was just band policy. They only recorded songs that they wrote themselves and the story. In fact, they turned down this song six times. Six times. I mean, finally, the songwriter is so desperate for them to sing it, had the movie's director arrange a private screening. And the band consented to watch the film, and it was so powerful after that, they recorded the track. And turns out they rocked it. But stubborn as ever, they disowned it when it went top 10 around the world. I mean, come on, would these guys ever like this song? They wouldn't even play it in concert. They wouldn't put it on their album. It's a great story you're gonna find out. Coming up next on Professor Rock. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember the great movie soundtracks and rushed out to buy them after seeing them up on the big screen, especially back in the 80s, you're gonna dig this channel of musical nostalgia. Make sure that you subscribe below right now, click the big red button and click the notification bell so you know when our newest videos and our interviews drop. We also have a Patreon. We have full interviews up there. Other great content you won't find elsewhere. Uh, you can become an honorary producer. This helps us keep it a daily channel and uh, helps keep the music alive. That's very important. Also, check out our merch below. So it's time for another edition of our series, The New Standards. We haven't done one of these in a long time. This is a show that takes an in-depth look into songs that transcend genre, decade, and fads. Songs that are monumental touchstones in our culture and within our society. Man, for today's installment, we have got a great one. This song was absolutely massive back in the day. It's only gotten bigger in the years since. One of my favorite songs from its time. It's Simple Minds with Don't You Forget About Me. Don't you forget about me. From the soundtrack of the 1985 pop culture classic, The Breakfast Club. So Simple Minds is the all-time biggest selling band coming out of Scotland. But despite a rich discography spanning 40 plus years, this band just does not get the recognition that they deserve. I mean, they've been recording material consistently since uh, 1978. They've released 19 studio albums, scored 24 UK Top 40 hits, and they've garnered massive international acclaim along the way. But, you know, except for Don't You Forget About Me and you know their 1985 album, Once Upon a Time, they remain one of the most underappreciated bands in the US, for sure. And, in fact, before their number one soundtrack hit, Simple Minds didn't have one charting single on the Billboard Hot 100. Think about that. And they've only had a handful uh, since then. Don't You Forget About Me, of course, propelled them to their rightful superstar status in the States, even if their career was already six albums into the making by then. Generally speaking, uh, American audiences had a lot of catching up to do at this point. There was a wealth of Simple Minds standout tracks just waiting to be discovered in the rest of their catalog at that point. Ironically, many diehard Simple Minds fans uh, resented the band's commercial success. As is so often the case, there was kind of this uh, elitist attitude that persisted with the band's early adopters who wanted them to remain true to their roots. But that's not how it works. Bands, you know, have to grow and evolve over time. And in 1985, it was time for Simple Minds to shine across the world. Don't, 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 don't. Simple Minds was founded by childhood buddies Jim Kerr and Charlie Burchill, who had known each other since they were eight years old. They've been the twin engine force behind the band since its inception in Glasgow in 1977. For those of you wondering, they named the band after some lyrics in a David Bowie song, The Gene Genie. Uh, so simple-minded you can't drive his module. So simple-minded you can't drive his module. Great song. Simple Minds released their first album, Life in a Day, uh, back in 79, which featured their debut single, the album's title track. The sound of Simple Minds really changed with every successive album, an evolution that reflected the band's melting pot of influences, you know, from early 70s New York City and British punk to David Bowie, Brian Eno, and the band Magazine, to name a few. They were, of course, also influenced by some disco. Yeah. 
The first four Simple Minds records were definitely eclectic and raw, and it wasn't until the release of their fifth album, New Gold Dream, that the band began writing songs uh, with more mass appeal. New Gold Dream had an urban electronic vibe to it that was full of ambient chords and textures. Simple Minds' uh, sixth studio album, Sparkle in the Rain, in 84 is perhaps uh, their biggest departure from their original material, uh, with the band pursuing bigger production and a much heavier guitar sound. Sparkle in the Rain, it was massive throughout Europe. It topped the LP chart in the UK and several other countries. Akira and uh, Birch Hill, just an amazing songwriting team. And of course, Jim Kerr's uh, charismatic onstage performances puts him duly in the discussion of one of the best front men of the 80s, period. Kerr's uh, profile reached an even wider audience when he married pretender singer Chrissy Hine in 1984. Uh, the two got hit shortly before Simple Minds opened for the pretenders on tour. Husband opener for wife. Uh, it was also during this time that Simple Minds contributed Don't You Forget About Me to the soundtrack of The Breakfast Club. Uh, let's get into that. The song was fittingly placed at the close of the movie. Everybody knows this. Made for a euphoric ending. The Breakfast Club. Don't, 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 don't. Directed by the great John Hughes, The Breakfast Club, of course, details an unforgettable paradigm-shifting Saturday in detention. Five students who have nothing in common except getting busted for violating school rules, featuring Brat Pack headliners Emilio Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall, Ali Sheedy, Molly Ringwald, and Judd Nelson. Each uh, plays a well-worn high school stock character. There's the athlete, the brain, the basket case, the princess, and uh, the criminal. My favorite. <laughs> but these five teens who would otherwise have no business talking to each other, you know, passing in the hall, they discover their peers are more complex and nuanced than they first imagined. Well, see you next Saturday. Yeah. And by the end of the film, they leave detention unexpectedly unified. But it leaves us to wonder if uh, this experience will have meant anything come Monday morning. Cue Don't You Forget About Me and, of course, Judd Nelson's iconic raised fist. As the credits roll, the song asks what we all want to know. What happens next time they pass each other in the hall of school? Will you stand above me, look my way, never love me, and will you recognize me, call my name, or walk on by? The Breakfast Club is such an authentic and thought-provoking work of art. Both this song and film, both essential entries into the John Hughes canon. I and mean, this is teen angst storytelling perfected. But even though Don't You Forget About Me is one of the most universally beloved songs of all time, get this, Simple Minds, they wanted nothing to do with it. There are actually a couple of reasons for this. Uh, first of all, they didn't write it. The song was written by Steve Schiff and Keith Forsey. Uh, the latter had previously co-written Flashdance, What a Feeling for Flashdance, number one hit, and also The Heat is On for Beverly Hills Cop, and number two hit. Keith Forsey actually wrote the song with Simple Minds in mind and pitched them by giving them a cassette of the song backstage at a concert. Simple Minds thought, you know, it was a good enough demo, but they were, you know, preferring to focus on their own material. Now, as we further break down the song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny. I wear the glasses that I always wear. Yeah, it's simple. With Zenny, you get to design your own frames. You choose the color, shape, the size, and the style. The price is so low and the frame so quality you can get three or four pair for what one would cost you elsewhere. Make sure to click on our info button right up here to get up to 80% off regular retail prices. And get our best deal by doing that. You stand so another reason Simple Minds weren't interested in the song was that Jim Kerr, uh, he was turned off by some of the lyrics apparently. Particularly the part about vanity insecurity. In fact, not understanding that the song had been specifically written for the movie's plot, 
they at one point counter-proposed using their new song Alive and Kickin' for the film instead. Top five hit for them after. Amazingly, Simple Minds weren't the only ones to pass on this incredible song. Reportedly, after Simple Minds turned it down, uh, Don't You Forget About Me was offered to Brian Ferry. And there was also Cy Kiernan of The Fix and Billy Idol, whom Forrest had already produced two albums for at the time. Uh, Breakfast Club co-producer Michelle Manning said, and I quote, I remember offering the song to Billy Idol. He didn't understand. I think a lot of people that pass will never say that they actually passed. Because we had the movie and the demo, which was literally just like the final song with Keith. People were just shutting us down right and left. It's hard to imagine now that such an iconic, incredible song was met with so much resistance by so many artists. But there was one artist who said yes, Chrissy Hind, who, as I mentioned earlier, had recently married lead singer Jim Kerr. The Pretenders front woman really liked the song and was down with the whole thing. But unfortunately, she was also pregnant and refused to record a music video. However, according to Michelle Manning, Hine told Kerr that he should do it because it would be a huge hit. Jim was still resistant to the idea, but he ultimately relented after meeting John Hughes and pre-screening the film. Watching the movie, that helped put the lyrics into a better context. And as a result, Simple Minds agreed to give it a go. So Keith Forsey, he flew out to Scotland, and he and the band got on well, actually. Migrating to London, Simple Minds recorded the track in a matter of a couple of hours. Said Jim Kerr about it, we turned him down six times. Finally, we felt so sorry for him, we thought we'd go through the motions of recording it, figuring the record company would hate it, and then we'd be off the hook. End of quote. Looking back, uh, Jim Kerr admitted that they were being brattish and insecure. It was someone else's song, and they only did their own material and a story. The good news was that getting the band into the studio, that was the hard part. Once they showed up, it was all magic. As the band started playing the song, it was game on. I mean, they were completely dialed in. <laughs> Kerr said that they were on fire. Everyone was just looking around at each other thinking, yeah, this is really good. No longer were they going through the motions. Soon drummer Mel Gaynor started showboating with his groove and the band was in the driver's seat from there. It wasn't long before Kerr began ad-libbing the song's fired up, hey, hey, hey intro. Likewise, at the end of the song, Jim also inserted the La 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 breakdown. It's basically because he and Forsey couldn't think of anything else to sing there. Actually, Jim Kerr uh, planned on writing a real lyric and recording it the next day. But when they played back the song, there was no doubt that the La La section was there to stay. It was really catchy. It was irresistible. It was brilliant. Don't you forget about me, it's a true worldwide standard, no doubt about it. Back in the day, it got an obscene amount of airplay, crossed over from rock stations to top 40 to dance and beyond. In the US, of course, it went to number one on the Billboard Hot 100, went to number one on the Cashbox chart, number one on the mainstream rock chart. And you can add that uh, to it, uh, number nine ranking on the Dance Club Songs chart and a top 40 appearance on the AC chart. I mean, this song was a monster. It crossed genres effortlessly and resonated with audiences from all walks of life. The brains, the basket cases, the princesses, even the criminals. To paraphrase, the breakfast club. But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain. And an athlete. And a basket case. A princess. And a criminal. Does that answer your question? Internationally, Don't You Forget About Me went top 10 around the world. It went to number 10 in South Africa, went to number 8 in Switzerland, number 6 in Australia, number 5 in Austria, number 4 in West Germany, number 3 in Ireland, New Zealand, and Italy, 
to number two in Belgium and number one in the Netherlands and Canada. With help from The Breakfast Club and the music video, Don't You Forget About Me, broke the band in America, expanding their fan base exponentially. Strangely, the music video features very little footage from the music, only just a smattering of scenes playing on the various televisions around the room, really focused on Jim seeing it. Since then, though, Don't You Forget About Me has become an unrelenting force in modern pop culture media, particularly in the new millennium. Seems like almost every major TV show in the past two decades has featured this song at least once. The Simpsons, Scrubs, One Tree Hill, The Handmaid's Tale. Don't, 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 don't you. Goldberg's Community, Riverdale, Superstore, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, 30 Rock. Friday Night Lights, Cold Case, Regular Show, Family Guy, Glee. Don't, 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 don't. The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Psych. And that's just a short list. I'll be alone, dancing, you know it, Songs also been reintroduced to the plot lines of movies like Pitch Perfect, Easy A, Along Comes Polly, and more recently, Bumblebee. And actually, Don't You Forget About Me has another John Hughes movie claim to fame. Uh, we talked about this a little bit a few months ago. The iconic prom scene at the end of 1986's Pretty in Pink was filmed to this song, but later featured If You Leave by OMD instead, which explains why the, the dancing doesn't quite follow the music of the song. Said Annie McCluskey of OMD, the song had to be 120 BPM because that's the tempo, don't you forget about me, which is the track they actually shot the prom scene to. Unfortunately, the editor obviously had no sense of rhythm because they're all dancing out of time in the final film. <laughs> don't you forget about me has also been covered by so many artists. Uh, just to name a couple, Matchbox 20, KT Tunstall, Dee Snyder on The Masked Singer, no less. Don't, 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 don't. Smash Mouth, The Fray, Yellow Card, OAR, Kelly Clarkson, The Killers. Don't you forget about me. Arcade Fire with the great Jim Kerr. And The Breakfast Club Princess herself. Molly Ringwald, she did her own lounge cover of the song. Forget about me. Oh yeah, and Billy Idol actually did do a recording of it as well on his greatest hits album. I love Billy Idol, huge fan. But I gotta say, Simple Minds were meant to do this song. Now, not surprisingly, the streaming numbers for Don't You Forget About Me are astronomical. Not even taking the previously mentioned placements into account, Don't You Forget About Me has been streamed over 500 million times, half a billion times on YouTube, and nearly 750 million times on Spotify, giving it 1.25 billion streams on just those two platforms. Uh, the tidal wave success of Don't You Forget About Me that was very unsettling for Simple Minds. I mean, they had dedicated years of their lives to writing songs, releasing albums, playing clubs, and you know, slowly working their way up the industry. And now with one fell swoop, they had a massive hit on their hands. A hit that they didn't write, and they had really only spent a few hours recording. Kerr and company almost felt guilty about it. Said Jim, we thought, we didn't even work for this. We just jumped down there for a couple of hours and now it's a number one of the Billboard charts. We just don't deserve this success. But then again, with all the hard work they'd put in before that, I would argue that they really did deserve it. Still, their newfound popularity, as is the case most of the time, a catch-22 situation for the band. Previously a college rock band in America, they were now being showered with mainstream attention with a song they felt didn't really represent the band's artistic image. Subsequently, there was a period of time when the band refused to include it in their live concert set. Fortunately, like I said, this happens a lot with different artists and their hit songs, the love-hate relationship they have. So taking all that into consideration, perhaps not surprisingly, don't you forget about me, it was left off of their 1985 album Once Upon a Time. 
which probably cost him about a million units, give or take. The good news is that now, years later, you can hear multiple versions of the song on the deluxe edition of the record. I actually got it for Christmas a few years back, the physical product. Fortunately, Simple Minds eventually relented and embraced Don't You Forget About Me Now going forward. Uh, they grew to appreciate their good fortune and just recognize how much it means to us fans. Said Kerr about it, the song and the film are almost iconic to certain generations, especially in America. So it's great when things come together and work so well. It's been a pleasure to see how much joy that song gives to so many people. Don't You Forget About Me is not only uh, my number one uh, on my Simple Minds track list, but probably my number one favorite song from a movie, period. Going back to John Hughes for just a minute, I gotta say that not only the king of brilliant teen film, but also he was the premier new wave modern rock curator of the greatest movie soundtracks. I mean, seriously, as a scrawny outcast kid growing up in a football town, John Hughes spoke my language, as well as all the other misfits out there. He understood us better than we understood ourselves. The music that brought his films to life was our lifeblood. Ali Sheedy's character famously said, and I quote, when you grow up, your heart dies. When you grow up, your heart dies. That was of course speaking about the adults in the room. But somehow John Hughes, he never grew up. Because that didn't happen to this one of a kind director and writer. He made sure that the generation who grew up on his movies and their music, they wouldn't forget the passion of youth. For me, Don't You Forget About Me, interpreted by Simple Minds as the collective artifact and combined statement of all of those films and all of those songs, all those ideas put together. Even decades later, whenever you hear this song, you always have to sing it loud and proud. John Hughes and Simple Minds, we will never, never forget. Thanks so much for watching. I love this song. Tell me what you think of the song below. What are your memories of Simple Minds and this song and this movie? And John Hughes is a director. Simple Minds is the purveyor of this song that really, I think, transmits the ideas of, of what John Hughes is trying to put down. Let's have a great discussion below. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Thank you.